What's up, guys? Welcome to local band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from, from anywhere in the entire world. I, I want to hear your music. Here you go, ladies and gentlemen. Tell you Smith, the word alive. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> How's it going, <laughs> dude? It is an absolute honor to have you on the show i i appreciate you taking some time out of your very busy schedule to do this man thank you so much um is there anything you want to plug or promote before i kind of get started um i mean people just we are the word alive.com it's got it all come come hang come see a show come jam some music that's about it that's that's how you do it right there hell yeah uh, good, sir. I want to start off with, with the first question being Hard Reset, which is so fantastic of an album, but it opens with the word alive is dead. Can you, can mm -hmm. you break through the process of why naming song one that right there? I mean, it just kind of like starts the hard reset. It's the word alive is dead. You know, like people who either didn't believe in the band or changes we've made or sonic changes you know it's so easy for fans to write bands off if they just don't get what they want from it and to me this was just like hard reset this is a new band this is a new energy and so it's just kind of like in the song it says we're born again and the whole like theme is basically like whatever version of the word alive like you were expecting or thinking you would hear is not necessarily what you're going to hear on this record and hopefully you just enjoy the show that is the album so i guess that means that the recording process of it was slightly different than than every other previous album i mean yeah definitely you know with lineup change and um I did a lot of the record over the pandemic and we didn't have a label at the time. So it was just kind of like, I was just writing for a record that like could happen or could not happen. And, you know, at times, you know, Zach was dealing with some health issues and, you know, missed like uh, one of the first tours back. And so I was just writing and I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to write the record. I feel like um, we should be making right now. And, um, and so we did. And, here we are. Is that is that kind of your normal process when you're when you're writing uh, when you're preparing for the next album? Like you you write lyrics or or play bass or guitar and then kind of present it to the band or does the band say like, hey, we've got some demos. What do you think? We collab. Like, how is that actual process? It's been it's been all of it. Like pretty much since Deceiver started it, where you know like. Um, like Empire and Deceiver were mostly written in like a practice space for the most part. Um, and then a very little bit in the studio, then pretty much Life Cycles On was just like, Zach would demo songs, Tony would demo songs, um, I would demo songs, Daniel would back in the day. Um, we would collab on things, then we would all, some, some songs were written all together, some were like two, two people kind of manning it um so there's never been like we only do it this way it's just been yeah like whoever is inspired to write and writes then people would present the songs and if everyone was vibing off of it then we would you know bring it to the studio and kind of everyone would tinker with it on the on the blackout tour that you just got off of uh which was an incredible lineup i noticed that it was a mostly thriller lineup uh, when when you guys were kind of like label shopping, is there something that Thriller pitched to you guys that kind of stood out more than any other label? I'm sure every label wanted you guys, but what did Thriller do or say without, you know, I know you can't tell us everything, but what what did oh, they I do that? Okay, tell me, tell me. I mean, the owner is Bob Becker, so he's who originally signed The Word Alive, and he founded Fearless, and, you know, he hit me up and was basically just like, look, I am putting together a new label. Um, I want to build a really special team. It's never going to sell to a major. We are going to stay independent um, for as long as the life of the label is. And we want to make sure that we build a roster that's diverse, that that we build a team that really cares about the music. And so we took less, we took less money to go with Thriller over other offers. And it basically the moral of it was just like, let's finish what we started. I think you know, to have Bob like and and the rest of the team like really believe in the band, um, 
and just like what our message is and, and what the energy was coming into the new record before he had even heard songs he was like i don't even need to hear the songs i just i know what record you're trying to make and and just from our conversations he was like i want to sign the band just off that so um they believed in it um without even needing to hear a bunch of stuff but then when they heard stuff they were really excited so um and yeah we've just been working on doing that finish what we started together that is amazing. Hell yeah. Is there is there a particular song that is a little bit harder to perform, maybe from a, a vocal perspective off the latest record when when it comes to live? Maybe you save this one to the end or you, you kind of get it out of the way a little early as far as uh, your voice? Um, We've played four songs so far. Strange Love, Slow Burn, Nocturnal Future. Oh, actually five. Um, New Reality and One of Us. I would say the hardest of those is actually Slow Burn um anything with screaming for me at this point in my career makes actually the song way easier um singing and running around on stage and being sick or tired or whatever it is like singing is infinitely harder than screaming um and at least for me and so slow burn's the hardest song of those to like really nail the character and everything i want to do but um uh, there are much harder songs still to come um that i'm sure We'll cross that bridge. Hate me is harder. Um, I mean, War With You is one of the hardest vocal songs that I've ever done. And, you know, we have some easy ones in there, like Invisible Army is like probably one of the easiest songs I've ever done. Um, so there are like, there's some of both. As someone that's that's toured so many times, gone so many places in the world, I feel like sometimes when I talk to artists, it, it might semi blur if that makes sense, like you, you kind of don't remember every little detail, but if there is a particular moment on the Blackout Tour Part One that that stands out, what was that moment? Uh, I would say like in Sayreville, New Jersey, we were, we're playing Starland Ballroom, which is a, a venue and a city we love playing. You kind of get the Jersey crowd, you get some PA crowd, you get, um, you know, the Virginias and you also get New York. So it's kind of like this place that people meet and it's like you have to really care about the band if you're traveling from those places and the staff there is always so great so um it was like one of the best crowds and shows we've had in probably like six or seven years um you know we shattered what we had been doing in merch and it just kind of felt like the the hard reset the new era of the band like actually felt like it was starting and all the hard work that we've been putting into the set, to the songs, to just devoting to this album cycle, like it really felt like it started to pay off really at that show. And then throughout the tour, we had a bunch of moments where we were just like, man, people are singing super loud. You know, we had like a shit ton of crowd surfers and people were just like super into the band. So um, I think like for us, it was just like this tour was really great for Mashes to New uh, and their crew are incredibly hospitable. We're really close friends at this point now. And for, for them to be like so supportive of us and, and hyping us up, um, the tour was just like really positive energy. And, you know, the fa their fans are really tremendous and really vocally and energetically supportive of the, the support bands that they take out. So uh, it was really just a special tour for us. Let's do some let's do some fun questions if it's okay with you. While yeah. while on tour, is there a go-to munchy snack after a great show or or just something when when you're on the road and you see this particular uh restaurant or fast food spot, you always stop and, and grab that snack? Uh I try never to eat fast food. Um, Good for you. and and I don't drink soda. Um I try not to eat junk food as much as I can. But this tour I had probably like three or four bags of Chex Mix um, and like not the small ones either, like just the big ones. The party um, size bags. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I love Chex Mix. Um, I try to be as healthy as I can on tour. Um, just, you know, I want to have the best voice that I possibly can every night and junk food is definitely not it. So I try to eat pretty, pretty good on tour as, as best I can. Do you recall the moment in your career when you called up mom and pops and you said, I made it. I call it the Hey Mama, I made it moment. What was that moment? Um, I never I never called them and said that about a moment until um, I got my gold record in the mail um, for a ride. Yes. Congratulations was, on that, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, that, 
that was the first time where I was like, and I didn't even say I made it. I just said, thank you for letting me make noise like you know, <laughs> back in the day and like just like supporting me because I don't think that's like making it. I think that's it's an, a huge accomplishment and I'm super proud of it. Always will be. But um, I don't think we've had our made it moment yet um you know i'm still struggling musician and wanting to like do this but you know it's it's definitely hard and it's more expensive to tour than ever and it's just difficult being a band in 2023 um you know you have a lot of things stacked against you so i hope that we have that moment and if and when we do i feel like i'll know exactly what it is and that's when she gets the call yeah, it'll probably be like us selling out like a headliner or something like that and being like, okay, like th- these these people like care about our band. And usually if you're doing, you know, 600 to 1,000 people and selling those out, it, usually you can grow it from there. So if we can get to that point, um, then I think I'll call and be like, all right, it's on. I saw that in, in January, you guys are back on the road. You're going overseas, some Australia dates, some, it looked like some Europe dates. Is there somewhere in the world that you have not played yet that you're kind of just like, I, I need to get here and, and jam yeah. and rock for these people? Yeah, Hawaii and Alaska are the last two states that the Word Alive have not played in. So those two are definitely very up there. Um, I would love to play, uh, let's see, South Africa. Um, we've had fans over the years that like, really asked us to play there. So I, I think that would be a really fun show. We've had friends go over there. And then honestly, somewhere crazy like India or something where, you know, Saudi Arabia, so- somewhere like so far from, you know, like Western civilization, I think would be really sick. We've played, I don't even know how many countries by now. You should get Probably like a map, like, like a, like a world plus. map and put like pins and in. figure it out. Yeah, I should actually, I, I should do that. But we, we've played a ton of places and a ton of places I would love to play again. We'll go anywhere where a ton of people want to hear us play. Um, so I, I have no problem traveling. I love traveling around the world. So um, and if I can do it because of music, then that's even better. Is uh, we have a lot of people that watch that are in like smaller bands, garage band startups, uh, and that are that are vocalists. Can you can you break down like what your your let's say it's an hour before showtime? What do you do for your for your voice? What kind of warm ups do you do? And then simultaneously <clears throat> after the show, how do you cool yourself down to be prepared for the next day? Um, well, I've gotten to a point where I'm not the best person to ask for this because I don't really warm up anymore. Um. I do some like face and jaw and like tongue stretches usually and I'll do like some like just like some minor scale buzzing things just kind of like loosen things up and then I just like kind of yell a couple times and then I just go on stage so and then after the stage after we play I don't warm down which like you're supposed to do but I don't know I just I like and, and it might make sense to some, and I would not say to try this or to do this. I'm not advocating for it. It's just what how it works for me. I think a huge part of you know your vocal performance on stage is the mental aspect. And so for me, once I'm like in the zone, I just try to like stay in it. So I don't warm down or do anything. I don't. I'm trying to stay like exactly where I was. Like if I have a really good show, I'm pretty much not going to warm up again until I either feel sick, run down, or something like that. But most people, you should be doing scales. You should, you know, gargle and do all the things you know the good teas i just try to stay as hydrated as possible i drink a lot of water on tour so staying hydrated and sleeping eight hours if you can um those two things are the most vital like once if i'm hydrated and rested i don't really need to warm up and it's when i'm like run down that's when i'm like okay i gotta get my voice to to a place it's not right now so it's not the the advice i would give everyone should warm up and you should warm down and do all the things <laughs> for your vocal health but um this is just what works for me uh, we're gonna take a chat question it says is there a significance to having so many features on hard reset and then a follow-up question for myself is there someone that you want it to be a feature on the album it just didn't work out timing wise or maybe their schedules didn't line up yeah, for this record, there's only one person that um, we had been going back and forth and trying to see if schedules, uh, uh, both a combination of a song and schedules could align. And that was Spencer from Ice Nine Kills. Um, we were trying to make it work, but 
his schedule was so crazy around the time and and ours was too so we we didn't make it happen so hopefully at some point we'll we'll rock a song together um the rest of them you know it, it's a two-part thing so the first part is i always wanted it to be collaborative like i always wanted features on every record just our friends like people that i love and, and respect their voices but unfortunately you know certain members at times could not agree or they you know they were just iffy or whatever so i'm like all right i'm just gonna wait and i waited until i could just be like hey i'm gonna call my friend and if they're on the song like this is what it is and because zach was just like dude whoever you think would be the sickest and he's so easy going that it was like then i would send the song he'd be like this is fucking insane so every every person is just like a friend um that i've had except for julian and i were like kind of friends and philip um we were kind of friends online we've at that point we had not met yet um now julian and i have become closer friends we hang out um but philip i'm looking forward to meet uh whenever i can when i can hopefully when we're playing with normandy i love those guys um but everyone else is like an old friend and so it was just someone who we love that either loves the band or love the song and j it just like really worked out well is there is there a song anywhere anywhere ranging from empire to hard reset that that you wish was in the live set like one of your particular favorite records that maybe the rest of the band's hmm. like ah we don't we don't want to play that one live but but maybe for for some reason like you've always fought for this one to be in the set um I, there are definitely songs over the years that like in that album cycle like i fought for probably or wanted to play um by now we've played we've played a lot of our songs um you know we've done life cycles in its entirety we've done deceiver we've played every song off the ep um dark matter we've played almost every song off of it um i'd say like off dark matter branded is a song that i would love to play um, off real collapsing is a song that i would have loved to have played um violent noise i'm trying to think if there's anything that I, um we played most of violent noise throughout like the pandemic we did some live streams so we've played pretty much all those songs um i'd say yeah same with monomania we played most of them uh the last song um god what is it the when you got song. when you got death so many only, so many jams yeah. like it, it gets death, death you forget the end if you assume the story is about you so I, yeah i'd love to play that one at some point one day and then comfort and chaos um off of monomania and then i want to play like every song off uh hard reset so well while doing research for this i had never heard a mountain or crazy do you do you do oh, you shit. do you ever uh, anticipate putting out more solo material in the future uh yeah i've actually put out a lot more than that um if you go on my solo page on spotify just telly um i've got i don't know probably like 10 or 11 now a mountain is just a demo um that i it's never a bop, though it's a bot finished oh thank you thank you i did do a new version of it that is just demo not mixed or anything like that that's it's in my dropbox somewhere but um yeah i, ha I have a bunch more solo songs that will be coming out i was supposed to have one come out this year but hopefully early next year i'll have the next one out a couple of a couple of odd questions that were thrown my way preparing for this uh okay. which what's your what's your opinion on venues taking merch cuts i mean i i think it's pretty much unanimous if you're a musician you don't want it's to be unanimous bullshit money. of course but, but yeah I, if we were getting like a percentage of bar sales or something, um, or when it's venue sellers, when you have to when you have to have someone work, like of of course you know you pay for that um, service. But when it's you're you're carrying the merch, you're selling the merch, you're counting, you're doing all this, like it, you're paying, you're bringing people to the establishment in the first place. Um, I yeah, I I don't think there's any musician who believes in a merch cut. Is that something that you guys experience like fairly often? Oh yeah, every night pretty much. Damn, that is that is totally whack, dude. Do, yeah, do, we do ever... gave away thousands and thousands of dollars on this last tour. Yeah, that is some horse shit for sure. Yeah. Do you, do you ever uh, talk to Ryan from Greeley or or anybody from In Fear and Faith? You still keep in touch yeah, with all those guys? I, it literally, uh, let's see, uh, twelve fifty five p.m. today. Um, so we were all talking. We have a Greeley Dads. I don't know if you can see it. We have a Greeley Dads is, chat. Is there is there a chance maybe band. like like a one off or or two nighter Greeley reunion just for the hell of it someday? 
Yeah, so we did one five years ago today. That's why we were, we were talking, um, and it was really sick. If we could make it work, I mean, everyone's got, um, you know, everyone's married with kids. Um, I'm not married, um, so I'm the straggler in the, <laughs> the department. But, um, uh, yeah, we all talk. We talk about it. It's definitely something we've discussed even within the last, like, six months. Um, it's something we would love to try to make happen next year, but it's it's just so hard with everyone's schedules. Alex moved to to Tennessee, um, and everyone's just you know they have their big boy jobs, so it we could never do a full tour. We could maybe do like a, a weekend type thing, weekend warrior type thing, or you know a festival, but um, probably nothing beyond that. But we all would love to if we could make it work timing wise. When it's times like this, when you're in between tours, what makes you happy, non-music related? Do you have collectibles, hobbies, anything you do in your downtime? Uh, I play basketball three times a week, um, okay. like pretty competitively. And so I do that Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. And it's like one of those things where I'm like, I schedule around it. I'm like, I am busy. <laughs> Mon Monday, Wednesday, Friday for these three hours each day. Like I am, I am busy. Um, so I do that pr like regularly, um, you know, just seeing friends like you're gone so much I, or I'm gone so much that I really try to just like spend time with my friends if I can, whether that's like hiking, going over and just watching a movie, hanging out. Um, so I, I like to do that. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, music is my life. So even off tour, I'm like constantly either writing or making music or hanging out with my musician friends and or hanging out at studios, just like being there while people are making music. So it's it's pretty much the the main thing in my life. Because because you ball so much, I imagine you you follow the NBA and or or college basketball. Who do you root for? Uh so I am a LeBron James fan and I am a Phoenix Suns fan. Uh, I grew up in Ohio and I've been watching LeBron since he was in high school. So I root for him wherever he goes. Let's go Lakers. So I'm a Lakers <clears throat> fan. Let's go Lakers. Yeah. So I, I always say, and me and Zach are kind of the same. Like we root for the Suns always and, and we root for the Lakers and LeBron always unless they're playing the Suns. Then, then I'm like, the I Suns. want LeBron to score like a hundred, but I want them to lose. <laughs> for sure. Uh, I know that Woe Is Me's kind of made a, 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 you know, they're back. And I know you had a, a clothing line back in the day. Is there any chance Resist and Rebel could ever see the light of day as far as uh, more clothing? Uh, probably not. Um, it took so much time and effort. And I took over that brand. Andrew and I started it together. And then um, he left after, I don't know, a couple of years. And it was really hard to manage and keep up, and it's very expensive. And to do that with all the other things that I do, it just was like, it was just a lot. And I mean, I could potentially drop like a one off, like pre order thing maybe, but I wouldn't do anything too crazy probably with it th these days. I mean, never say never. You never know. Uh, I hope Tabitha prepped you on the trivia portion of the show. She did not prep me on anything. Okay, so I always do a trivia <clears throat> portion of the show. Um, I We usually ask that our guests bring uh, any form of hot sauce whatsoever, which I, I, I'm guessing she did not tell you about this. I could I could get some hot sauce from my fridge, I guess. Okay, so here's the thing. So the trivia portion is if you have the advantage. If there's a movie or TV show that you've seen the most, I'm going to look up trivia on this movie or TV show and try and stump you. Whether you get it right or wrong. Oh, I'm horrible. I'm, I'm, my I'm, brain doesn't work this way, so I'll be I'll be bad. Okay. <laughs> Most likely. Most likely. But you're down to do it. Sure. Okay. I do I will I will say uh how how long do you think this will be overall? Only cuz she told me a certain time and I am going to glass draw tonight. Their 30th anniversary. Okay. Tour. We'll we'll say 10 more minutes. Cool. Perfect. Cool. Let me grab some Let's hot grab sauce the hot sauce. <laughs> I'll do the same and we'll 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 roll a coaster through the, the last ones real quick. All right, no worries. All right, hell yeah. I mean, glass jaw, that's a great excuse. Glass jaw is a great excuse. I've never even seen glass jaw live, but I get it. I get it. I got some, I got my blueberry hellfire right here. I think that's a, a fair, a fair one to go with. What, what'd you, what'd you bring? All right. Um, I got some Trader Joe's habanero hot sauce. I, th I, 
try to grab one that's not a little bitch one. I this I, I think I this like is your style. If I remember, I'm going I'm going Hellfire Blueberry Hell. It tastes nothing like blueberry. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I imagine not. What what uh what movie or TV show would you pick that if if I was to look up trivia on that? Something that, in my opinion, the movies are easier to go because if you go TV show, there's hundreds of episodes. It's easier to just pick um, a single movie. I'll go, fuck. I got. I guess I'll try Anchorman. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna look up some Anchorman trivia. Do you recall the worst the word alive show of all time? Everything went wrong at this particular uh, gig. We've had a few that are pretty similar when we first started our original drummer tony a we're we're like all good we're we're all friends now but he the 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 show that made us be like we have to kick him out he just forgot the whole song and he just stopped playing in the and he it was literally just like he's like playing and then just slowly like it was like you turned a battery off and it was like and we're just like what do you what play what's going on he's like I don't remember the song. And we'd been on tour for like three weeks. So this this like, has been like multiple days of playing it. Yeah, like you played it as good as you could play it a bunch of times. And and he was really struggling on that tour, I think. We, this is before we were playing to a click. Like, And, you know, he is an incredible photographer, like visual artist. Like he's his creative mind is like next level. I think drums were like a fun side thing for him. So the rest of us are all like this is what we want to do. And I think he was just like, this is fun. And so um, it didn't work out on that front, but there's that one. We were in South America. So I want to say we were in maybe Bogota or something. And we were playing a crazy, not great venue. And the electrical was like wild and it like fried some of our shit. So we only got to play like a few songs and we played 2012 with like no computer, no backtrack. So no, dun, 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 yeah, right, right. you know, none of that. It was just dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like we just played super raw and with no mic, like we had no mics working. So I just had to like sing and scream to the crowd and it ended up being really, really memorable, but it, and, and fun because the fans are so passionate there, but it sucked to like finally play and then, not have your shit work right. um we've had stuff like that where just everything went wrong that could go wrong we only got to play like two or three songs so that that it happens to everyone so i won't say it's like the worst it's just it happens it's a product of if you do this long enough it will happen we'll just do one trivia but if you've seen anchorman <laughs> a bunch you might know it in anchorman out of san diego do you recall the four letter call sign that the tv station that ron burgundy works for oh my god that's a great question and i definitely do not um san diego um i mean i'm assuming our sd2 of the four no okay then I. Definitely it starts with a k i don't know let's go sauce All right, what do you, what, did you just like do a dab or what, just like... just a little quick swig this little oh a swig no oh, okay. a little quick swig okay. kvwn is the answer by the way KVWN. Oof. That'll get the, that'll get the blood flowing. Oh. <laughs> while while oh, you're shit. suffering, give this me your my... give me your best band advice for a band that's just starting up right now. Tell them tell me what you would tell them. Do not make this mistake. Maybe a mistake you made early on in your career. Um being signed or like having management or even a booking agent, like those things shouldn't be your goals. Your goals should be to save up as much as you can, put out as quality of recordings as you can and artwork and really network yourself, play as many local shows as you can because you don't want to try to grow too fast. Like enjoy like learning what to do, what not to do so that when you are ready to be, you know, managed and, and have a booking agent and have a label that you can actually like use those partnerships to your advantage rather than being reliant on them. Cause if you're reliant on them, it's probably not going to work out. Um, so that would just be my, my biggest advice. I think a lot of people are like, Oh, like I want to just get signed. And as if that will fix or solve or create this, uh, you know, success for you. And the success comes from you guys caring about your own art and practicing sounding as good as you can. Um, and just caring about the way your art sounds. What is your favorite band that never made it? 
Um, I'd, I mean, I guess made it is a relative term per se, but I it would is. say something like, I don't even know. Um, I mean, Thursday's massive it, or have been massive in, in different points. And I always felt like they could have been one of the biggest bands, um, you know, in post hardcore they're they're one of the most inspiring to me. So I, I'd say them like I, I know they came back and they're crushing it again. So I'm not going to say they haven't made it. They they do. I would love to have half the career they have, but I just feel like they could have gone even bigger, like so much bigger. When when you f- first joined the Word Alive, I'm sure your talents were sought out by other bands. Was there was there another band that you highly considered that we may not know about that you either auditioned to and it's just not out there on the internet that you considered? Um, not when I joined the word alive, but before I joined Greeley States, um, I tried out for Skylet Drive and for Bless the Fall. Um, and, um, I, I love all those guys. We're all good friends because of it today. It just wasn't the right fit at the time. And I'm grateful that it, it didn't work out because everything worked out perfectly how it should. My final question for you, sir. And again, I appreciate your time so much. God bless you. Uh, if, if someone, if someone wants to contact you for a feature and, uh, and pay the fee, go through, go through thriller, whatever the case may be, what is the best process for that? Um, I don't do as many anymore and there's a lot of steps that have to happen for it to, to work out these days. But if someone is interested, they can send to our like general management email, the word alive info at gmail.com and, I mean, basically, it's like send the song. Um, if you have a budget um, that you have to stick to, s- start there. S- whatever the sections, like just be as detailed and professional as possible. And then it starts with I have to love the song and feel like it's you know a good fit. The label wants a say and is like, is this a good fit? Does the schedule, depending on whatever we're trying to do, does it align? Um, so there, there are a bunch of factors. Um, to it as a whole and so but i try to do at least a couple a year just to do something that's outside of the word alive hell yeah well tell you enjoy the glass jaw show sir again thank you for your time hard reset is fantastic stay safe on the road stay hydrated and uh if it's okay with you i'm gonna put this on youtube tomorrow morning if that's okay yeah yeah of course cheers brother enjoy your evening thank you so much ladies and gentlemen tell you smith the word alive hell yeah thank you for having me thank you sir